Good morning, church family. It's good to see all of you this morning. We're going to do some things just a little bit different today. I have uh, my brother here, Michael Wetzel, and he's going to be joining me on the stage. And um, so uh, we're really happy to have him up here, and we're just going to have some share time today. Looking forward to it. Um, this guy recently went on a mission trip to Ukraine, and um, yeah. And, and really, you guys were all a part of that because we prayed this brother uh, there and back, and then we also, um, uh, if you think about it, we, we helped in, in some ways in with some financial support, so prayer support and some financial support. And uh, he's going to share, you know, just like they did in the New Testament book of Acts, they did some sharing about what they experienced um, whenever they would go out and then they would come back. And so they did some sharing. So that's what we're going to have here today. But I just want to pray before we get started here. Heavenly Father, God, we just, uh, we're so thankful for the opportunity to be here in this place, right here in this place, to sing praises to you, God. You Lord, are so, are so worthy of those praises. And um, God, thank you for the salvation um, that we were just singing about, that we have this relationship with, with you, Lord, um, because of that sacrificial death on the cross. And um, thankful for uh, brothers and sisters in Christ who have the kind of hearts that they want to take the gospel and share Jesus and encourage hearts who are sharing Jesus whether it's in our own backyard or across the pond, uh, wherever it might be, Lord. And, and so we're, we're thankful for that um, and thankful for, uh, uh, for their hearts and wanting to do that as well. Lord, you make all things possible, and we're, we're excited to hear about Michael's uh, recent trip and um, to see what it is that you're doing um, in, in a place that, that is a lot different than what we are experiencing here. Uh, we're going to go home to some comfy places here later on today, and, uh, but some people are living in, in some difficult, uh, stressful times. And so, uh, Lord, we just pray that you would just bless them and uh, watch out over them and encourage them as they, as they fight the good fight where they're at. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, uh, so Michael, just a few questions that we have for you today. The first one being this, I mentioned Ukraine, but there's a specific place in Ukraine because there are some folks here who may not be familiar with where you went or even where it's at on the map. And so if you would just talk to us for a moment about where you went. Well, real quick, we've worked in Ukraine for 20 years, as most of you know, and in 10 different cities. Right now, we're uh, supporting, uh, helping to support three pastors in different, three different areas, and we invited them to come to the city of Lviv, which is up there in the upper left corner, the closest one to Poland, one of the safer cities, actually. Uh, but when we got there, the air raid sirens went off, so no bombing. But the guys came from Kremenchuk, Kramatorsk, and Mykolaiv, and uh, they all came in, and we... Uh, shared encouragement and prayer with them for much of a week and other things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And so can you share a little bit about the, the, the state of things, the, the condition of, of, of the, uh, that area of the world, what, what they're going through and, and even really speak into like the state of the church mm -hmm. in that area? Yeah. Uh, this is uh, uh, Pastor Eager from Mikolaev, which we've talked about in the past. Um, he and his wife and his church, he's a Jewish Christian, a convert, and um, they go out to villages all over, even into Kyrgyzstan that's been bombed and flooded. Um, and you guys have helped us send supplies, food and, and uh, medicine to them. But uh, that was one of the couples. Him, him and his wife, Dina, came to Lviv. This is Pastor uh, Yuri. He and uh, his daughter, Lisa, one of his daughters, he has three daughters, but his wife couldn't make it. So she came and helped uh, uh, translate for us. He's in the middle of Ukraine, and they go out to 10 villages on uh, alternating on a weekly basis and also take out supplies and food and medicine. And then this, of course, is Yuri's church, who uh, most of you know Yuri. He's in Kramatorsk area. He's, of course, been one of our favorites, and we've been supporting all of these guys for a few years. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're just still going strong, and the thing is, is they're sharing Jesus everywhere they go. The gospel is spreading like crazy, not just in these three churches, 
but all over Ukraine. And that's the positive note. Even though the war is still hot and heavy, don't let anybody... I had a Polish guy ask if the war was still going on. Oh, really? Wow. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like, I mean, just in the last few days, there have been major skirmishes. But these guys are still continuing to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and getting results. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, that's kind of an interesting perspective. You know, people, people even that close asking the question, is the war still going on? Well, you know, when you're, you know, trying to, you know, maintain another day and, and, and not get killed, somebody's trying to kill you. I mean, you're, th that's war, <laughs> you know, and you know that there are bad things that are happening. Um, so, so, uh, can you speak into how God used, uh, you, you, the role that you played over there and then, um, yeah, just what you did specifically? Well, briefly, I could spend a couple of hours on this, but I won't just a couple of minutes and, and several pictures. Uh, we flew. Uh, we flew from uh, Detroit into. By the way, your prayers for my knee worked. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, I mean, it was it was amazing because I got over there and it didn't bother me at all. So Good. I know your prayers worked. But of course, we had to walk across the border from Poland to Ukraine, and this was our first walk to the um, Polish border, about 200 yards. And then after that, we had to walk 200 more yards like this to the uh, Ukrainian border, and then after that, we had to walk 200 more yards to our ride, and then another hour ride into Lviv, where we spent most of our week. This is my friend Dale. He's a pastor down in Florida. He's a distant cousin. We don't admit that much, but <laughs> he, uh, one of my first college roommates, but Dale went with me, and he was a great, great help, great asset. We got into Lviv, and it, we had never been in this city. Okay. But it's an amazing city. I mean, these cobblestone streets are, are hundreds or, well, I guess hundreds of years old. Yeah. And everywhere, there were hundreds, thousands of people all over the streets all the time until midnight. Wow. Well, until one when it was their curfew. Okay. But it was an amazing city to visit. We got there. Uh, actually, we got there that first day. We got out of the car with our luggage and an air raid siren went off, and Dale and I went, well, that's new. Uh, we haven't heard that before, but no bombing at that point, even though it was, they were being bombed all over the country. This was our first evening with the pastors and wives, uh, four different pastors and their wives, and Vlad with his daughter. Uh, we stayed in a really nice hotel, and uh, uh, we fed them good meals, and, and every day we got together for meals and and a devotion and prayer and encouragement. Uh, I can't describe it. But one day, one of the devotions that I gave one day was talking about the fact that Jesus said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move this mountain into the sea. And again, I reiterated, I think he was being literal. <laughs> uh, I think we need to pray big and pray bold uh, when we come to the Lord. And so at that point, I gave out necklaces to the men and to the women. The women's were silver. This is Vlad with his on. And, and they looked at, he looked at it, he goes, well, what is that? He couldn't, I said, look close. It's a mustard seed. And they all went, oh, yeah, that's great. But we all prayed together every meal. Uh, th threw this one in. Uh, this, it was Yuri's birthday. And we were at a restaurant one day, and I asked the waiters if they had a little, they brought us some green cheesecake. It was the best cheesecake I've had, uh, and we sang happy birthday, of course. So uh, one day, um, we went and visited a neighborhood that had been bombed, uh -huh. uh, and this school, you're, this building you're looking at is a kindergarten school, and the bombing uh, crater was right behind me in that fenced-in area. The whole top of that building was actually destroyed. The locals have filled in the crater and they're rebuilding the building on their own without funds. But when the building, when the bomb uh, landed, uh, people in the apartment building behind it uh, actually had time to get out of the apartment building. They knew what could be coming. And yes, a second blast, and so no one was killed at that point. Well, that's amazing. But I mean, to see these buildings. Uh, these apartment buildings with all, they said not a window was left in the big apartment buildings. I mean, it was, I brought back a little piece of shrapnel from my desk uh, just to help me remember to pray. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see here. 
Well, oh, another day, uh, we actually went and um, visited a, a, a nearby smaller city, like the size of Lansing, and uh, a pastor has started a, a children's program uh, for orphans and social orphans, and it was a great time, a, a great day together. Uh, I, I don't have a picture of it, but he actually uh, just recently bought a um, popcorn popping machine and a cotton candy machine, and uh, the kids sang songs, and they had Bible lessons for them. It was great. Yeah. It was a great day. So that was uh, one of the days. And then on our last day, we were actually able to go to uh, uh, one of the pastor's churches, and they asked us to uh, speak there. I shared uh, some of the history of Shepherd's Purse and our prayers and concern for them, and the fact that you and many other people uh, around our country are praying for them, and they really appreciate that when they hear it. I mean, it's not just you know, uh, a quick little thing. They, they say, yes, please, Michael, thank you. Tell them to keep praying for us. And uh, boy, they were a great, great group of people. We had a, a great time that day. But of course, all over the country, I mean, one day we were eating supper and the air raid siren goes off. I've got an app on my phone that actually goes off when we're over there. And one day we were eating and it went off and I checked and it was, they were being bombed all over the country, all over, everywhere. Uh, and, but we didn't experience any direct bombing, uh, regretfully. So we need to continue to pray for them. And, uh, but they're, like I say, the Lord is moving and a lot of good things. Uh, Here's the uh, kids program, one of their programs. Now, I have to ask you a question, though. Were you doing the videoing? Yeah, no, yes, I was on that one, yeah. Okay, all right. Was it, because that, I, bad? Was it that bad? No, I was just gonna, I was just gonna say, where, why weren't you cha-cha? Well, and you notice my friend Dale was sitting in the back row, kind of stretched out there. We were kind of tired at that point, but you know. Okay, we were, okay, yeah, fair we'll, enough. We'll admit it, fair old, two old guys in Ukraine, you know. Fair enough. We did get in on some of it, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, it is good to see that despite the war going, I mean, God is moving even among kids, and we were in one Orthodox church, and they had big posters of uh, kids, a kid's face, and underneath it had something the kid had said, and it says, I just want my dad back, he's in heaven, oh. or I just want my mo mom or dad to come home, they're, they're fighting in the war. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's challenging, so. Yeah. Yeah. 
So another question for you, biggest surprise maybe <laughs> for you. I don't know about the biggest surprise. Or a surprise. We, we, we kind of expected, you know, most of what happened there. But, you know, there was a little gypsy girl and her brother that came up to us. We ate outside uh, cafes. Mm -hmm. And she came up to us uh, three times during the week uh, trying to sell us bouquets of flowers. And uh, the first time, Yuri goes, no, no, how much? She says, 4,000 grivna, which I thought was pretty cheap for the whole bunch. He's going, no, no, too much, too much. Anyway, he sh kind of shooed her away and said, yeah, 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 don't. She came back up to me another time when I was sitting there alone, and she walked up to me, and I went, nope. She goes, yes, nope, yes, nope, yes. And people were getting a kick out of it sitting around. But the, the, the last time she came up to us, we finally did uh, buy that bouquet of roses and flowers. And it was interesting. Uh, that we took it to church the last day. I didn't know what I was going to do with a bouquet of flowers. And Nazar, one of our pastors, says, give it to the pastor's wife. That's a, that's a good uh, uh, move, you know. And so, yeah, yeah. Sorry, we didn't. Sorry, Katrina, we didn't. Um, but uh, we gave it to her, and then I guess she made a big deal in church. My husband never brings me enough flowers. These Americans, oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, now take a hint. Take a hint, Gary. So, yeah, that was kind of a, that was kind of a nice surprise. They were just cute kids. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah. Uh, enjoy most. What did you enjoy most? Uh, well, the food was pretty, pretty good. Um, well, yeah, our dollar is worth 38 of theirs right now. Is that a big surprise then for you? That, that was a big surprise. Uh, it's, it used to be eight, mm -hmm. but, uh, but the good thing is, is we had a couple of really good steak dinners mm -hmm. for like six or seven dollars, mm -hmm. and it was good. Yeah. But uh, um, let's see, a big surprise, or enjoy excuse most. me, what did we enjoy most? Uh, this right here, this picture, was our last night uh, with the pastors and wives. And after we ate, I told these guys, I said, I want you three pastors in the back room here. There was a, a little room off to the back. And I said, huddle up, guys. I want to pray a blessing over you. We've worked with these guys for a few years now. And, and I can't describe to you the emotion of feeling that we're sending them back. Mm -hmm. We're sending them. They're, they're working sacrificially for the Lord and we're sending him back into it. And we huddled up, and I couldn't talk for a couple minutes. And Yuri's patting me on the back. And finally, finally, I got the words out and prayed, and we hugged and said our goodbyes. So that, that was the thing that I enjoyed most, I think. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then, and so, so they're headed back to, you know, their, their towns that you showed us on the map, and they're going to be back in the trenches of ministry and in a very tough, difficult place. And so this was, this was a big-time opportunity to encourage those guys. Yeah. So really, your, 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 your ministry opportunity that you had, that you took advantage of, it sounds like, was like that role of a, like a Barnabas, mm -hmm. like encouraging hearts to remain true to the Lord. And, um, and, and so... With that, then, let me ask you this. What, what can we be praying about? Well, I will note in the picture, too, the same shirt. They uh, took Dale and I, I out and my friend uh, one of the last days, and they treated us buying these Ukrainian shirts. It's cool. got the Ukrainian trident symbol on here. And, uh, well, we just tried to bless each other in big ways. Mm -hmm. We raised over $13,000 uh, for this trip. And all expenses, of yeah. course, yep. And we sent money back home with them, and we're sending more. Uh, uh, Yuri was talking about um, wanting sleeping bags uh, for people this coming winter because Russia is targeting again the utilities. So that's a big thing. They, last winter, no heat, no electricity. Mm -hmm. And he said that they're trying to raise money for sleeping bags, a 1,000 of them. But he notified me the other day that it, evidently they have those sleeping bags. And he'll mention that in the video in a moment. But he said that they need gas cylinders, little gas stoves, uh, and they're trying to get a thousand of those. So we're going to be—you'll be hearing more about that. But uh, Yuri shared with us for a moment on that issue. Hi, everybody. My name is Yura. I am a pastor in Ukraine, 
in the city of Kramatorsk. Thank you a lot for praying about us, for supporting us. We are so thankful to God for what He has been doing in our city. God has been using this war as a trigger for bringing a revival in our city. Uh, praise God, right now we have four new churches, around 1,000 people attend our services. It's amazing, it's unbelievable. Praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, please continue to pray about us that God will raise up new leaders for this big group of people. We need at least like four pastors, four worship leaders and so on just. Um, we really need it. And also, you know, winter is coming to Ukraine and we are... Uh, we will appreciate if you think and pray about like sleeping bags. It really can help our people to survive th through this winter time. Do you know, uh, because of the war situation, our electricity can be cut off like without gas and sleeping bag can be really a, a real blessing for us to survive and to go through this winter time. Thank you. God bless you. So, uh, yeah, I'll just continue to pray for these three pastors, their families, for safety, for the people in Ukraine, etc. Mm -hmm. yeah. That war is still raging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a tough winter, it sounds like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. as was before yeah. as well. Um, so what can we, last question, what can we learn from the Christians in Ukraine? Is there something that you can think of that we could learn from them? I kept thinking about this question that you had for me, and I didn't know how to answer it. Uh, until this morning, I, I had a thought. This is something that has become part of their life. Attention, air raid alert. Proceed to the nearest shelter. And it continues. We heard that quite a few times. We heard that quite a few times. And the thing is, is it says also, your overconfidence may be your downfall. And while we were there in Lviv, the air raid sirens would go off and people wouldn't, they weren't taking shelter. They're getting so used to that. But some, a lot of people are putting their confidence now in the military and the might uh, and the power of their country. But a lot of Christians over there, thousands of them are put, be, beginning to realize they need to put more confidence in the Lord. And in the fact that right now, right now, there are thousands upon thousands, uh, 10,000 times 10,000, millions and millions of warring angels standing in heaven by the throne waiting for the word. They're literally there watching and waiting for the trumpet blast. And that's what we need to put our confidence in. We need to also, you know, I realize over there, I came in this morning and I realized how easily we could lose all this. How easy we could lose it. They've lost homes. They've been separated from families. Churches have been destroyed. And it took them by surprise. They, you know, they would never have expected. So I guess one thing we learn is appreciate what we have. Our family, our Christian family, our own families, our country. It felt so good to get back in the United States. I felt like kissing the ground again. You know, despite what's going on. So, yes, that's definitely something we learned. Thank you, Michael. We appreciate it. Yeah, it was great to hear, you know, sometimes we send people out and we don't get to hear. And so I think it's important for us to hear about what they what they did. And so we appreciate your, your sharing and uh, continue to pray for uh, those who are ministering to families, hurting souls um, in that war-torn uh, part of our world. Um, at this point, we are going to go ahead and we are going to move into our next steps time. And so for some of you, this is a time where um, uh, you're thinking about, hey, I would... I'm going through some really difficult things in my life, and um, maybe you want somebody to pray for you, and there will be folks in the back who have little tags on, lanyards on, and they would love to pray for you. And for, um, for others, maybe you're, you're, you know, you're hearing and being a part of this fellowship here today, you're saying, hey, I want this to be my church family. I want this to be my church home. And we would love... For that, to, uh, for that to happen, be the case. And uh, so I would love to spend time talking with you um, as we prepare to go out from here. Um, for the rest of us, though, we're going to be preparing to participate in the Lord's Supper. 
And as I was thinking about this, uh, um, recently Katrina and I went up into the uh, Upper Peninsula, what y'all call the UP, and, um, and then I'm getting messages, are you a youper yet? And I'm like, you know what, yeah, and why not? And, and so it's really, uh, you guys, most of you know this, it's a, a very beautiful place, and the lighthouses were just phenomenal. Uh, we went up to one place called, um, uh, I, th- I think it was uh, White, was it Whitefish? Whitefish. Yeah, and, and there was this lighthouse right up there at that, in that area, and it was just so, so beautiful. And then I got to thinking about um, that setting and that lighthouse and how important those lighthouses are. And then I got to thinking about this verse of scripture that is on my, um, on my whiteboard in my office. And I wrote it this past week, last week, um, not realizing how many lighthouses that I would see. But it was John chapter 8, verse 12, where Jesus says, and, and, I'll, and I'll say it the way that it would have been said then, Ego e me, tafos tu cosmo. I, I am the light of the world. And, and, I, and, I, and so then I started putting this stuff together in my head, and, and I'm thinking, you know, just as, just as those ships out there, they need light to be able to make it safely back into the harbors and the different places that they needed to go. And there's so many, there were so many ships that just never made it because of the, the, the sea. We need the light of life, Jesus Christ, for eternal life. Um, just as they needed that light, that physical light, we need Christ in our lives. And, and so um, let's remember um, the light and the hope and the life that we have that comes through Jesus Christ as we, as we participate in these emblems. So hopefully when you walked in, you were able to grab one of these little packets and there's a little piece of bread and there is some juice in the bottom of this. And hopefully we will take this moment to remember that we have the light of life, Jesus Christ, and that whoever um, is in him will never have to walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the light of life, Jesus. Jesus, thank you for coming and thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for the hope that we have that comes through that sacrificial death and resurrection. Uh, Lord, we just pray that you would bless these emblems and bless those who uh, partake of them. And uh, we pray again, Father, for um, uh, the things that we do and say in the, in the rest of our time remaining here, that they would be glorifying and uplifting um, and uh, that your name would just be made famous because salvation only comes through you. And you are everything, Lord. And so help us to remember that in this moment. In Jesus' name, amen.